Vanessa, thanks for coming on the podcast. It's nice to see you again. Thanks for having me. Today we're going to talk about an unpleasant subject, um, but at the same time, it's something I know a lot of people, or pretty much everyone's going to be interested in. You guys have been studying the water quality all around Guiones, Palata, from the river mouth all the way down to Baker's Beach, if I understand it right. Can you quickly introduce yourself and then explain what you've been up to for over a year now? Yeah, so my name is Dr. Vanessa Beese. Um, I'm a scientist, marine biologist, and especially conservationist working here in the area. And I founded the Wildlife Conservation Association. And uh, just about a year or two ago, um, started receiving a lot of concerns from community members about water quality. All of that brown, foamy stuff that we've all seen, especially in the rainy season, um, and start asking ourselves what's in the water. I was always told the brown stuff in the water was tannins, and it's not, it's not fecal matter. It's not anything like that. It's just other thing. And uh, I've heard a lot of differing ideas on this concept. Can you just, just tell us the truth? What's going on there? It's poop. Um, so uh, it's, it likely has a lot of other things mixed in there. So when it rains, you've, you've seen dirt will go into the water. The water can get cloudy, and that doesn't always mean there's poop in there, um, but we have been testing that and we are seeing that bacteria that indicates there's some kind of sewage or manure that is definitely in the water and at relatively high concentrations. Okay, so it's safe to say all that brown water that we see that surfaces sometimes, it's not just uh, an algae bloom or something like that. You're saying there's definitely fecal matter in that and be careful. Yes, if you see brown foamy water, Try to go away from that area. Make sure you don't drift into it. If you do go underwater, you're likely to have earaches or possibly have, you know, uh, an eye infection, anything like that, even gastrointestinal issues. If you see that after you surf, that's likely what's happening. <laughs> hey, Vanessa, how popular are you now for being the one to say all this publicly <laughs> to the world? <laughs> well, I think, you know, water quality is, it's a basic human right. Um, it's in everyone's interest that we protect water quality. We all spend a lot of time, this community spends a lot of time swimming in the water. We don't want to get to a point where you get sick from swimming in the water and even worse that where that might get into our drinking water. So it's important to protect water. Um, it's not a nice issue and I've learned way more about poop in the last year than I would like to. But there's a solution and uh, for most of us it's just checking out what's going on at your home. Um, and, you know, especially in this area, in most cases, a septic tank is actually not even an option here. People, there's not enough space for that to drain through. So um, in most cases, we're all, we all have the wrong system. Can you walk us through, like, the differences between Guiones and the Palata or Rivermouth area? So the Rivermouth is much worse off um, because it's coming from a very large area. Guiones isn't as impacted in the rainy season, but especially after those very heavy rains, we do see some more contamination coming up in, in the Guiones area. Okay, so Guiones gets hit hardest post-rain, which basically means it's due to construction or some sort of human activity in the area, essentially. Is that correct? Yeah, likely. All right, so Vanessa... For anybody who wants to keep up to date with the results and see them as they come in, can you tell us what they do? Yes, all of the results are posted. We collect samples on Wednesdays and they'll be posted uh, within 24 hours, usually on Thursdays around right before the sunset surf. Uh, you can check swimguide.org or download the Swim Guide app. Um, and if you have your location services, you'll automatically see the three beaches that we test nearby and you can see what the latest results are. We also share it on all of our social media channels with WCA Nosara is our handle on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so you can follow us to stay updated on the latest results through those means as well. So Vanessa, how long have you been testing the water uh, in multiple areas between Guiones and Palata? 24 weeks now. Okay. So You've been testing it for a little while. Is there a particular time of year that's worse than the other that you're seeing? Especially, especially in the rainy season. Okay. Okay. So what can people do who either own homes here or are thinking about purchasing land? Like what can they do to improve the situation? Feel free to contact us, um, but learn more about uh, wastewater treatment for your construction site or your existing home. Check where that water goes. Uh, whether you have something called a grease trap, a septic tank, or a wastewater treatment tank, learn how that works and how to properly use it. Um, and especially for most of us, make sure you have room 
for all of that water to drain back through the ground um, in the rainy season when those water levels rise and you might have some overflow issues. I got you. So get your septic system checked out. Um, and there are people available for that. If people want to check into that, send us a message or hit us up. And one thing I can say from kind of working in the industry is that the older homes historically have the more difficult processing systems and the, the, the worst septic system. So if you have an older home in the area, please get it checked out. There are ways of helping deal with this. Now, what you're saying, Vanessa, is Guiones is worse during the rainy season, and then the Boca area is the strongest of them all because of the water outlet right there that's so big. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So can you please tell us and tell all the homeowners and property owners exactly what you think we should do to help alleviate the situation, please? Absolutely. Take action now. Um, check where the water from your toilet goes, what it goes through, and what that looks like. Ask for multiple different opinions and look for options to improve that. Keep in mind that in the dry season, the situation is very different. So remember what your law is like in the rainy season, how fast that water absorbs and keep that in mind. Most of us have septic systems that require a very large area for all of that to filter through the earth. And for that reason, a lot of us are going to have to put in special contained wastewater treatment systems um, for each individual home to make sure that this problem doesn't become a bigger issue. Now, now the, the good news is the cost of that is actually not super high. Putting in a wastewater treatment system has become quite affordable compared to, well, a lot of other problems we have. It actually sounds like this is, dare I say, solvable. Do you feel we can do something about this or am I being too optimistic saying that? Yeah, absolutely. You can now buy a commercial, commercially built complete system um, and it's just a giant tank that gets put into the ground and connected to your, your wastewater outputs. Um, and there's also even other different homemade affordable options that you can come up with. There's really options for every price range and I think it's something that's affordable for everyone and obviously really important for us to, to, to make sure this doesn't become a bigger issue here. Gotcha. So what you're saying is, although the test results have come in, we definitely have fecal matter at certain times of the year. You're saying that this is approachable, dare I say solvable, um, if people just take action and get after it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Well, honestly, Vanessa, I, I'm taking the test result news as a little better than I kind of expected, which I'm very happy about. And I'm really encouraged that people could do some sort of something about it. Um, I just hope people do. Yeah, I you know we have a great advantage that we have an amazing community that really cares. And I think most of us want to do what's best. And we're in many ways just unaware of these issues. Um, and so I think that we can all work together to update all of our systems, make sure that new homes are, are getting the appropriate systems put into place and, and make sure this doesn't become a bigger issue for us. Right on. Um, hey, I wanna thank you and Robert Edgeworth uh, for making this happen. I know that you're not getting rich off of driving everywhere around the community, getting water samples all the time. And I also know there's some more funds available. Can you talk us through the financial backing of it? And for those of us who don't know Mr. Edgeworth, yeah, absolutely. So we started the program thanks to a donation and a match, matching funds, um, as well as other private donations that were made. Uh, it cost us about $15,000 to set up the lab, um, and it will be about $15,000 per year uh, from here on out. Um, and that covers the cost, obviously, of, of transportation, of all of the materials, the machines that we need to keep this running, um, and to take these tests and, and be able to do it in a way that is scientifically accurate. Um, and yeah, like you said, we're just collecting data and information so that we can find a solution. Um, all of, you know, our decisions need to be informed. We need to understand what the issue is and how to how to correct it. Um, and obviously it would be a really big issue for us um, if this became a bigger problem and it became more public. And so we're trying to nip this in the butt and, and get ahead of it before it becomes a problem. All right, so the short version is, if I can say it back, is you guys could use some donations. You basically need 15,000 a year to make this whole thing operate. We'll know the water clarity of Guiones, Palata, and the Rivermouth, and everyone can operate off of that. Is that correct? 
Yep. Okay. Well, hey, I want to thank you. I want to thank Mr. Edgeworth. I want to thank everyone who's helped. Uh, and above all else, I want to thank any homeowners or anybody who gets their septic systems checked um, by an actual engineer who knows what they're talking about. We can provide that information if they're interested. And we just want to thank you guys for doing everything that you're doing. You don't have to do this. I know you're not making money off of it, but we do appreciate it. And if I understand it right, it sounds like our water situation is actually a little better than maybe we suspected or other places in the country. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, it could, it could definitely be worse. <laughs> well, it might be if we don't do something about it, which is why we're talking right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa, as always. And again, we've recorded a podcast a long time ago about your life history that one of these days we, we might launch <laughs> out there. But in the meantime, You've been busy. The community appreciates you. And thanks for everything that you do. And thank you to Mr. Robert for what he's done to get us started. Thank you.